Hi and welcome back. Shading is one of the seven elements of art. Let us see the different traditional types and how to use them. Let's draw eyes for this exercise. Drawing outline is the first step that we all know. But shading is something that if applied correctly gives volume and sense of depth to your drawing in space when you apply full range of values. I'll talk more on this as I draw. You can directly jump to each shading type with the help of below mentioned timelines in the description box. The first type is smooth shading. This is the most commonly used and preferred type as we perceive in the real world. It is a well known method that everybody has tried in their life since they have started drawing in their childhood or teenage. When we look at the eyes of the subject, we see values from light to dark in a form of smooth gradient. Of course there are soft and hard edges for shadows but in most of the areas the transition is smooth. This is the most effective method that everyone uses when they start to draw and over a period of time they experiment with other different methods and eventually create their own style. I am using the side of the lead to lay down a value which is very light so that it covers the area where I want to shade and the left out portion for the whites. In other words, a base layer is applied to separate out the shape that needs to be shaded whereas the left out shape depicts the highlight. Now I will add more pressure on the pencil in order to achieve the mid tones and with the tip of the pencil add the details and fine values. I will add layers of values gradually so that no white areas is left out and also the layers mix and blend nicely with each other. You may also use blending tools for smooth effects like brush, rubber knives or paper stumps. The materials you can use is a regular graphite pencil for realistic and hyper realistic drawings. A mechanical pencil or a clutch pencil is also very useful too. They come in various sizes like 3.5 mm, 2 mm, 0.5 mm and so on. The 2 mm lead can be used for the broader strokes whereas using 0.5 mm lead will give you more smooth and granular effect. Also 0.5 mm lead can reach and shade those tiny areas in between the tooth of the paper surface which is often left out by the thick lead. However, you can still do that by burnishing the paper. Using 0.5 mm lead gives you an advantage of smooth shading. However, the only concern is that you have a very limited range of grades. HB and 2B are readily available whereas it is difficult to get 4B and 6B. Drawing lines parallel to each other in one direction is called as hatching. For example, I am drawing straight lines vertically from top to bottom to cover the light values and shadow shapes. These lines can be vertical, horizontal or in cross directions from left to right and vice versa. I am applying gentle pressure on the pencil to achieve the light value for the base layer. Also, I am placing the lines close to each other so that they appear dense. Now I will apply more pressure on the pencil and draw the lines even closer to indicate the mid tone. 
Slowly and gradually, I will keep on applying more pressure on the pencil while drawing the lines to make them dark for the shadow shapes. I am repeating this process until I achieve the desired values that I see in the subject and apply them to my drawing. If you are using graphite pencil, then you will probably have to use different grades of pencil at each stage. I am using a contour pencil, Perry Noir, which produces variety of values from light to dark with single pencil since the lead is combination of graphite and charcoal which produces good blacks. Your shading will look convincing and create interest only if you can depict the correct values at correct place. I am changing from overhand grip to tripod grip for adding the details. Now I will start rendering the other side eye. I will repeat the process the same way I did for the left one. Try to add the lines as straight as possible since drawing crooked lines will lead to an unexpected value in the later stage. I will just add few more lines for the details and final touch. Try using different mediums like ink pen, ball pen sketch brush and etc. The term itself explains the type of shading. When you draw two lines that crosses one another is called as cross hatching. So basically you have to draw lines that overlap each other. Draw vertical, horizontal and or slant lines that crisscrosses each other in opposite directions and repeat them until you get the light value that is approximately 20 to 30 percent of grey and 70 percent white area of the paper. I will draw light lines by applying gentle pressure on the pencil so that some white area of the paper is visible for indicating the light value. The idea of covering the base layer remains the same but the only difference is that now we have is that now we are drawing the lines in crisscross pattern.
for the middle value i will add another layer of criss cross lines on top of the previous layer i shall keep on doing this until 50 to 60 percent area of the shape is covered with lines i will continue adding layers with more and more of lines until it covers up the area with only lines and no white area of the paper is left to achieve the darker value for the shadow shapes while doing this i'm also applying more pressure on the pencil to achieve the dark value remember i'm blending or merging the value from light to dark by controlling the pressure on the pencil and while drawing the lines after shading all the shapes i will check for any left out details by squinting my eyes and add them accordingly Gently hold the pencil between your fingers then lift it up at certain height and drop it on the area where you want to add the dot. When you drop the pencil it hits the paper to make a mark. Again lift the pencil and drop it again and again to make the dots. This method or technique is called stippling. Once you get bored of doing it this way then simply hold the pencil firmly and add the dots just like you draw a line this will also expedite the process this type of shading is very different from the previous ones since we have to now add numerous dots instead of lines which is very time consuming and lengthy process at times it could be painful task especially for larger drawings However, the end result is amazing and very unique in its style. This method needs lot of patience, ample time and consistency for superior results. The ideology of obtaining the values remains the same whereas the technique is somewhat different. In the earlier technique, by just adding few lines, you were able to fill up the shapes quite quickly. However now you have to blast in with plenty of dots to cover up a small area. But trust me it's fun doing this especially that sound of pencil dropping on the paper to mark a dot. However this could be annoying for others. There is one more thing that you can try. tie 4 to 5 pencils with a string or wrap them with a cello tape this way you can add 5 dots instead of one at a time at least the base layer will be covered up quickly instead of adding dots one by one you can put several dots in one go this is something similar to the brush that we create in adobe photoshop it would be worth trying you can also experiment by using a ink pen or waterproof ink for this exercise for my college exams i had used color pencils to render the illustrations the output was really awesome and one of my best results
Well, this brings us to the end of this video and also to the end of the face foundation. I really hope that you liked this video. Soon I will start with the next face and new videos so consider subscribing if you are new to this channel and share with your friends. Thanks for watching and see you soon.